and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome here to another transfer related video. We are going to talk about Mesut Ozil and the interest coming from Barcelona of all clubs. We are interested reportedly, according to Mundo Deportivo, in bringing Mesut Ozil to the camp now, potentially as early as January. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the positives and the negative side of any possible move for Ozil in January or possibly in the summer, when he would in fact be a free transfer. His contract at Arsenal expires this summer. He could be available in January for a cut price, as Mundo Deportivo have been saying in the past few days. Apparently, he would be very excited to play at the camp now, and he really wants to push through this move in January and leave Arsenal to join Barcelona. Ozil definitely wants to leave. Arsenal don't want him to. They've been trying now for a number of months to offer both him and Alexis Sanchez renewals. Both of them so far have resisted Arsenal's advances, and Ozil could be on his way out in January. So what I'm going to do here is start with the positives of Ozil coming to Barca, what he would give the team, what his overall profile would give us and how he would impact the club in a positive manner. And the first thing that I'll start with is, as quoted by Mundo Deportivo, the price, to be honest, has to be on the positive list. 20 million euros is what it would take to bring Ozil to Barca in January. That, for me, by the current standards, even if he is 29 years old, he's just turned 29 last month, he is obviously getting towards the latter end of his career, but I still feel like he has a number of years left. And 20 million euros for a midfielder of that quality, of that experience in the modern market that has to go down it simply has to as a positive I touched on it briefly there but the second point for me has to be experience at 29 years old the clubs that he's played for so far in his career and of course his international experience he has to go down as a player who is vastly experienced on the European stage and in the very biggest competitions you think of him as a World Cup winner as somebody who's played for Real Madrid he's got already got La Liga experience he's played in the latter stages of the Champions League he's played in Europe now for a number of years and he really has got experience right across Europe from the Bundesliga to La Liga to the Premier League he's made 88 caps so far for Germany 22 goals in that time and he really has left his mark everywhere he's been he's been a very consistent player in the Premier League he's had new experiences he's developed himself as a player and I think the spell there with Arsenal certainly would have improved him as a person as well in his discipline and also in the way that he plays the game and that brings me on to my third point which would be that I personally believe Mesut Ozil certainly suits the Barcelona style of play if you look at him as a player he is certainly somebody who is very very comfortable in possession which for me as a Barcelona midfielder that is the first thing you look for can they look good on the ball can they keep the ball can they retain it can they move with it and also certainly somebody who can pick the ball up he's got a very good first touch he's certainly very very good in terms of the last final third where he's creating chances for his teammates he's got a lot of assists over the years and he really is one of those players who I think would come into our system and suit us very nicely certainly when he was at Real Madrid when you could see him every single week alongside Barca playing for Real you looked at him and thought and he's certainly somebody who could easily slot into our team. You sort of looked at him in the same way now where you'd probably look at Gross, Modric, players who could suit Barca, and it was a shame really that he ended up at Real because he could have easily come into our team at an earlier period and played and excelled very, very well. The fourth point would be relating to a January move, he would not be cup-tied in the Champions League. A lot of these guys that we're going for, you think about Coutinho, if we brought him in in January, he would not be able to play in the Champions League. Coutinho has already played in the competition for Liverpool, so he would not be eligible to play for Barca. If Ozil was brought in though, completely different story. Arsenal of course didn't quite qualify for the Champions League, they've been in the Europa League this season and if Ozil joined in January he would be able to play the very key Champions League games that we've got coming up in the rest of the season, the vital knockout stage rounds he would be able to play in. The fifth point would just be the general quality of the player. Yes he's 29 years old, yes of course people have got their qualms with that, I'm going to come onto that in the negative side, but the one thing you have to look at is the quality of the player, how good he actually is. And and that would improve our squad. And you've got to sort of take into consideration the kind of players that we want to move on in our team. If we do sell, the likes of Arda Turan, Andre Gomez as well has been linked with an exit, Rafinha possibly when he comes back from injury, we don't know how the club is going to react to that. Those kind of players, if they were moved out and you brought in somebody like Ozil in their replacement, you know, you spend sort of Arda's wages on Ozil, you've got to look at the difference in quality. I would much rather have somebody like Ozil in our squad compared to the likes of Arda, somebody who's taken up wages for not contributing at all. Ozil would 
certainly improve the quality of our squad. I'm not saying he's going to start every single game, but the games that he did play, and if he was on the bench, that kind of calibre of player would certainly improve our squad as a whole and would definitely affect our performances. And this is a very, very interesting one to me. It's sort of looking at his game when he plays for Germany. When he plays for Germany, whenever he goes on international break, you have to sit down and watch his performances because, there's no doubt about it, they're very, very good. Every single time he plays for Germany, he has an effect on the game, he plays in a system that suits him, and he plays very, very well. At Arsenal, he's been questioned at times, sometimes he's brilliant, sometimes he's not so good, but you have to say, when he's with Germany, around very good players, in a good system, in a solid structure, he looks very, very good, which makes me think, how would he be at Barcelona? At Arsenal, maybe the system doesn't suit him, maybe the tactics aren't quite there, maybe he doesn't have the quality of players around him. At Barcelona, we've got a solid system, we're certainly working towards that, we've got quality players, we've got a system that I think, in time, could certainly suit him with the way that we play. I think he'd be a lot more comfortable at Barcelona than he has maybe shown at Arsenal. And the one thing that you would say about Ozil, and the one thing that he gets branded with time and time and time after again is, by the English media in particular, oh, you know, he's a lazy player. That is absolute nonsense. If you sit down and watch his game, and even if you look at the numbers for his time at Arsenal, he is actually not a lazy player. The only thing lazy about him is his body language. He goes around the pitch in a way that looks like he doesn't care. The way he plays the game, it looks like it's effortless. But you could say the same for a lot of world-class players over the period of playing football. Players who play the game in that way are more often than not world-class footballers. They play the game with an elegance, they play the game with a swagger. He looks at times like he doesn't care, but he does a lot of running, he covers a lot of ground. When he gets the ball, he uses it well, and he plays the game carefree. He's elegant, he's good on the ball, and he knows what he's doing. Some of those guys, you know, you think about N'Golo Kante, he's lauded in the English press simply because he spends the entire 90 minutes sprinting around, and a lot of those guys would rate Kante above Busquets simply because Busquets can't get around the pitch, Busquets isn't quick, he's not strong. Football is not always about that. We've learned that at Barcelona. We want players with intelligence, we want players who can play the game in the right way, and I certainly think Ozil would definitely fit that bracket. And I've spoken already about the fact that he is 29 years old, and of course he isn't getting any younger. The one thing is though, he only turned 29 in October last month, so he's just turned 29. But the one thing I would say about Ozil is, I wouldn't say he's a player that depends on his pace. He's not somebody who really revolves around having that real burst of athleticism, that acceleration. He's not really somebody who will dedicate his game solely on that athletic ability. So I think as he gets older, it's not necessarily so that he's going to get worse and worse and worse. He's not somebody who's going to really decline in a year or so. He's somebody that understands the game, that uses his brain more often than not. And obviously, when that comes down to it, you don't always have to have that athleticism. You don't always have to have that pace. If he's 32, 33, he could still be effective in a midfield role simply because he uses the ball well, he uses his brain, he tries to think before he moves. And that's really, really important. And the final thing that I do want to show you on the positive side for Ozil is simply you guys looking at the stats because the numbers for Ozil really in terms of assists as well are incredible. You know, he really does have it create a lot of chances and that's the one thing about him at Arsenal as well. He's had a lot of chances created most seasons in the Premier League. He's created the most of chances for his teammates. Not always at Arsenal have they been put to good use. I think at Barca you'd have, you know, the likes of Suarez, Messi, Dembele maybe even on the end of those chances and you would really think they could be turned into goals. But at the Premier League, 120 six appearances for Arsenal, 24 goals and 48 assists. Really high numbers on the assist side. In La Liga, even better. Slightly less goals, but more assists. 105 appearances, 19 goals and an incredible 55 assists in his time at Real Madrid. In his time at Real, he really was outstanding. He was one of those players that even as a Barca fan, you had to admire. He was a good player. He always kept his head down. He didn't get involved in any nonsense. We've never hated him or anything like that. He's never done anything to rub Barca fans up the wrong way. He was somebody that played so well and you really admired him. And you have to say, since he's left Real Madrid, Ronaldo's performances have genuinely gone downhill. Ozil at Real Madrid constantly fed Ronaldo with very good chances, very good opportunities. And since he's left, Ronaldo, you have to say it, he suffered. In the Bundesliga, 101 appearances, 13 goals and 37 assists. And you've got to remember as well, that was when he was making his name. But even then, the number's very, very impressive. So you put all those together in the top flight leagues, the Premier League, La Liga, the Bundesliga, three of the most impressive 
impressive leagues in world football, 432 appearances, 56 goals and an incredible 140 assists in that time. There is no doubt about it, over the course of his career so far, he's been very, very successful as a player, he's been very, very successful as a playmaker, and he is, no doubt about it, in a very, very high bracket in terms of how good he is as a player. But, as with any player and any transfer, there are negatives on the side of Oza. I've mentioned it a lot already, he is 29 years old. Obviously, that is not ideal for a player coming into the club, and the main thing about these negatives for me mainly revolve around the board. If the board handled this transfer with intelligence, we could actually get our hands here on a very good player and we could get the best out of him, we could get a good few years out of Ozil and it would be an outstanding piece of business. If the board get this wrong, you look at Arda Turan, we could have exactly the same situation and that in itself would be an absolute catastrophe. So I gotta put my faith here in the hands of the board and that is why this transfer still doesn't really sit well with me, simply because when you've got to rely on Bartomeu and co to make the right decisions, I don't like doing Doing that. But at 29 years old, obviously, he's not getting any younger. It's not an ideal age for a player coming into the club. The most important thing is how we would handle his contract. Ozil is not going to be on tiny wages. At Arsenal, he's a big earner. He could probably try and be the same at Barcelona. But you've got to think of Arda Turan. He is earning right now over 100000 a week. If we got him off the wage bill, I would happily replace him with Ozil on the wage bill, and it would be a massive upgrade. What we cannot do, though, is give Ozil a mega sort of five-year contract on mega wages. You cannot afford to do that. If you do that, you're putting yourself in a really bad position. What I wouldn't be too partial to was Ozil getting a three-year deal with maybe the option of a fourth, something like that. Somehow, you know, maybe he could trigger it with appearances or performance-related things. Give him a three-year deal, maybe with the option of a fourth, depending on how he's playing. That's why we've got to be clever with this. You cannot just go handing out players who are 29 five-year deals. It will end very, very badly for you. And the other thing for me, a very big concern would be I would not really like to sign Ozil if it's going to hamper those younger than him, if Alenia is going to be hampered, if players coming into the team are going to be sacrificed for a player coming in who's 29 years old. If we're bringing in Ozil and we're still trying to implement the young players, I'm all for it. He's a quality player. He can be world class on his day. You only got to look at his performance against Tottenham at the weekend. He was absolutely unbelievable for Arsenal. He was mad of the match in a massive game and he was instrumental to everything Arsenal did well that day. But if, of course, you bring him in and he's hampering the development of the likes of Alenia and players like that coming through it's not really the right thing to do. I think there's potential to do both. I think we can bring somebody like Ozil in but we have to shift some players out. We've got to shift that Arda Turan. If Valverde doesn't count on Gomez he's got to go as well. You think about Danny Suarez. Is Valverde going to count in him? Is he going to get the minutes he deserves? You don't want things like that to be hampered either. If we bring Ozil in, we manage his contract right we manage his wages right, we manage the playing time for our younger players it could potentially work but we're going to have to wait and see. The only other rest I would have about him is the exact positioning. Where exactly would he want to play as Barcelona? Could he play in a three? He's done it before. He can play in a slightly more withdrawn role. His ideal position would be in the number 10 role in an attacking midfield position and we haven't always had that position available. We don't always play with a really creative midfielder. Valverde has been versatile so far with his formations though. Sometimes we lined up with 4-4-2, sometimes 4-3-3, sometimes 4-2-3-1. In a 4-2-3-1, Ozil could work very, very very well indeed, but that needs to be discussed as well. Like I say, a lot of this deal is positive. Ozil is a very good player, available at a very good price, but it has to be managed correctly. The board have got to do the bit on their side, and I do not like relying on the board for anything. We're going to have to see what happens. Ozil apparently is ready to pack his bags and go to Barcelona in January. We're going to have to wait and see if that's true, but I thought I would just run over the transfer with some positives and negatives for you guys to see what you made of it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, guys. Do you think Ozil would be a good signing would you sign him or do you have any reservations about the move let me know your thoughts down below i will see you later on for the review of barcelona against juventus in the champions league tonight but until then as always vesca el barca, 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 barca.